Behind me right now is the Keymo Stadium, the home of Doncaster Rovers Football Club, and it has been for the last 14 years. But this December, it marks 15 years, the 15th anniversary of Doncaster Rovers' final home game at their former ground, Bellevue. Yes, it is back, episode three of Lost Football Ground series, Bellevue, Doncaster Rovers. Bellevue is the former home of Doncaster Rovers from 1922 to 2006. It's a ground that's very close to my heart. It's where I went to watch my first game when I was a kid. The ground was very much run down in the 1980s, but in the 1990s, things changed. Behind me is the Yaz Complex. Now, back in 1995, we bumped up the price of Bellevue to £20 million. Now, at the time, Bellevue was the most sought-after piece of land outside of London. It did produce, though, a very, very horrible story that why Bellevue very nearly got sold in the mid 90s. In the summer of 95 a fire broke out in the main stand luckily no one was injured. Ken Richardson former chairman was charged with conspiracy to commit arson and was sent to prison for four years. By 1998 Doncaster Rovers were falling apart on and off the pitch with the club facing relegation from the football league and extinction altogether. Chairman John Ryan who took over the club for £50,000 in the summer of 1998 spoke about the mammoth task that he had awaiting him trying to resurrect the club and also the former ground. The problem Bellevue. was that I bought a club for £50,000 but in reality I was, you know, there was nothing there. We had no nets, uh, no team, no, about three or four players, only of which one or two ever played for the club. There was absolutely nothing. The, club, uh, the ground was absolutely derelict. Um, I've never seen a club as low uh, as Doncaster Rovers were in, in the summer of 98. There's some great doubt whether the conference would even accept us. I had to give personal guarantees and all sorts of things for the conference to accept us as, as a football club. It was less... Uh overgrown when I was a kid. <laughs> this feel actually feels very nostalgic. This is the way I would go to go into the town more end where we used to stand the popular stand. It was, yeah, that's when I first got my dose of football. But on this walk down here, the only thing that survived, these bollards right here, the one behind me there, I used to walk through there. You wouldn't believe thousands of people walk through here to get to where the shed, where this area is, is where you go in where the turnstiles were, then you had your programmes. <laughs> Brings back a lot of memories. Walking down this path though, you do actually still see some old stuff from the old stadium. Such as this gate right here, where you used to have the, the car park going into there. So the car park would be around here. And then of course, the stadium would be there. And the other thing as well, that, that still survived to this day, is that piece of wood over there. That old piece of wood used to be the old match day sign, but there are still some street names, such as Bellevue Way, Rosie Two Close, which is the old away end, Popular Mews, which is where I used to stand, and of course, Rovers Way, which of course used to be the old street to get into the ground. It is very sad that only really street names really remain of this, well, once fantastic place. Of course, I stood. The stand used to be just behind there where I stood with my dad when I was younger. It is very, very sad that could have preserved the legacy of this place a lot a lot better however though if you actually delve a little bit further i will show you there is a little bit of the stadium that still remains so behind there is the old north stand that is where they used to house the away end so behind here and i'll show you there that point there was actually part of the old stadium i believe that used to be the old toilets how about that? There are a couple of murals, such as the Rovers badge, and of course 2006, which is where Rovers played the final game. And so to the final game, of course, against Nottingham Forest. In fact, here's me with the scarf. There we are, got the old scarf. In fact, here it is. There you go, Doncaster Rovers, Nottingham Forest, 2006. So by a click of fingers, I'll be back to Joe outside. Oh. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> so yeah, Theo Street, he was actually on loan and he did this against Nottingham Forest. From the Rovers. Well, that one I don't think is going to be any bother. Oh, it is, but well, it's gone in the back of the net. Would you believe that? 
One of my favourite games though has to be 2005 against Aston Villa in the League Cup. We absolutely destroyed them. In fact, here's one of my favourite goals from that game. Mulligan fires it back in and danger here for Aston Villa again. It's 2-0. And there we are as we leave the site for the final time. I'm so pleased I finally got to do this episode. I've been wanting to do this for ages. But yes, that is episode three of Lost Football Ground Series. If you want to see episode one and episode two, there is a playlist down below. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next episode.